Welcome everybody to another Passports Online Tour Director Lecture. My name is David Markle and I am the President of Passports. We're very happy to be able to bring this content to you um, from, uh, from overseas. Luis, you are, where are you exactly? I live in Madrid, in the you central in Madrid. area, southwest, yeah. So, and uh, as you've seen our other lectures, everybody is um, from uh, somewhere in Europe. Um, and uh, we're happy to be doing this. For more information about our lectures, please visit passports.com slash blog, and you'll see different articles in there. You know what, I should have this ready every time. Um, and you'll see um, different uh, articles in here, you know, different blogs, and it has, you know, like our blogs from last week, our, our lectures from last week, and this one has the lectures from this week, and all of the lectures from last week are posted here. You can see them all. So there's Luis's first lecture and stuff. So you can see all of the lectures that we've done are online. Um, and please check them out, share them on social media, anywhere you like, use them for any purpose that you see fit. Uh, you know, we'd love for more people to join us. Uh, and um, if you have any feedback at all, I always post the feedback link in the chat. If you have suggestions for new topics or another way or any, anything that you think we could be doing better, we would love to hear it. Um, the lectures are generally between 20 to 30 minutes. There will be a question period at the end. If you do post anything in the chat, it only comes to us. It's not a public chat. So if you're trying to chat publicly, that won't work. Um, but um, there will be a question time at the end and you use the raise hand button and um and then and when you click that we see it and then you can unmute your mic and um and ask a question so that um that happened yes there it is cynthia you found the button should i should i make the thing so you oh no you put it down <laughs> um so uh yeah if you do raise it we can see it uh so anyway uh, at the end there'll be a time for questions click the button we'll call on people after that there will be a kahoot there are five questions in the kahoot and um and all of the uh, all of the questions are hidden inside of the lecture, so yeah. uh, there you go. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Luis Chacones. Here he is going to talk to us about uh, Spanish uh, language and um, and foods tapas. Uh, so, Luis, welcome. Oh, I always forget to show thank the you, pictures. Dave. Always oh, thank you. There's some pictures of Luis on tour. Pictures that he took. Of, uh, of groups that he led overseas. All right, so I'm right. going to cancel my screen share here and you can take it away. Oh, that's right. I need to share mine. Well, I'll do it in, in a second because I want to show you something that is small and maybe with the big screen is better now, maybe, I think. Okay. okay. So uh, yes, like Dave said, said, my name is Luis Traconis. I am a tour director for Passports. I'm also an architect. I have taught English in my life also. I wouldn't call myself an English teacher, but I have taught English. I'm a soccer coach, a bit of everything. And I'm uh, very passionate about traveling too. I wanted to show you something to start today because uh, Sarah's lecture was great about Italy and food. And since we're gonna be talking about Spanish language, food and traditions, I wanted to show you a little something and the first word you're going to learn in Spanish today. Um, by the way, do you know how to call this in Spanish? You say bow tie. Here in Spain, we say pajarita. Pajarita. Bird, you say pajaro. Pajaro. And this would be pajarita, like a little female bird. My, uh, my dad loves to, to wear his uh, bow tie. He's a professor here in Madrid also. And uh, so when I wear it, I always remember my, my dad. Uh, we talked today, by the way. But then you also have a kind of uh, Italian, Italian uh, kind of uh, pasta. Hopefully, Sarah, this is Italian and not uh, made somewhere else. And so I had, I had a bit of this today for, uh, for lunch. You see a bit of the bag here. And uh, yeah, I wanted to show you that this is called pajarita and these two. And we're gonna be talking about that, about food. Uh, today, remember three different things, very uh, well connected, okay? Everything is connected. Uh, the language, 
the um, food and traditions. Mm, I think I'm doing this wrong. Wait a second. Oh, there we go. You can see it now, right? Yes, perfect. Okay. Very good. Okay. So yes, the Spanish language, food and traditions. And uh, why did I um, put the Spanish flag to start? We're not gonna get really deep into it. This is not like fun with flags with uh, Sheldon Cooper by the Big Bang Theory. But I wanted to tell you that, well, these two colors, by the way, the red and the yellow, of course, like in other countries, we believe um, they represent the red blood shed in a few, well, in the many wars Spain participated, and then the yellow or the gold, the wealth of the country. But it also has some origins from Roman times, uh, their clothing, even Roman Catholic Church, and so on. I don't want to talk too much about that, but I want to tell you a little bit about our uh, coat of arms. We call it Escudo. Escudo. And remember, uh, last week, we, we mentioned a very important year, uh, 1492, when uh, finally the kingdom of Spain was established. Um, and then here we see some kingdoms united, right? You see the Castillo, or the land of Castillo, the land of castles, Castilla and Leon. Castilla y Leon, the castle and the lion. And then down here, you see um, the flag of the Kingdom of Aragon and Navarre, these two, okay? So we have mainly these four kingdoms represented. And finally, the last kingdom to be uh, conquered was here in Granada, okay? Remember when the Iberians, the Christians, uh, reconquered the peninsula, they uh, ended in Granada to take it away from the Moors and all the um, yeah, previous civilizations that had been in this area. So we have here a pomegranate, Granada, pomegranate, okay? Here, the symbol of the Bourbon house. Remember the two dynasties we have had in our history, the Habsburgs from uh, what we know today as Austria and Germany, from that part of the world, uh, 1500s until 1700s. And now still today, we have the Bourbons, okay? So the Bourbon house is represented here with the floor the Lee. Plus ultra, meaning uh, the other land and the Spanish empire had uh, conquered overseas, passing these two towers of Hercules by the Strait of Gibraltar and then continuing to the other side of the world. And we're going to see the maps of those um, countries as we know them today. I put this here uh, because I wanted to play some music, but the sound wasn't very good. And also because I want to show you this USI. USI is the unique, special, and important things of Spain. It's like an acronym uh, for us to remember. Okay, so one more time, this map of the world with the 200s of Spain being right here, very well location um, to go to the Americas, to go down to Africa, to go up to the north east of Europe, right? Remember, even uh, Philip II tried to conquer this uh, kingdom, the United Kingdom. Uh, apparently, only a storm uh, was the main uh, reason that stopped him. Uh, but imagine if uh, that hadn't happened, maybe you would also be speaking Spanish uh, today in the US, who knows, right? Uh, also, I wanted to show you here that in, that in the Canary Islands, we talked about it last week, uh, when we listen to the hour in the radio, they say, for example, 9 p.m., and then we say, una hora menos in Canarias, one hour less in the Canary Islands, okay? There is a different time there. Okay, and then you saw this map too, but now I want to do an exercise with you, and again, I want to ask you different questions um, today, and you can answer through the chat. And I think it's going to be good for you to learn and take notes, especially the teenagers who are connected today. But I wanted to point out from this map, where we use the C and the Z, 
Because remember, in Castilian Spanish, we pronounce the C like you do with the TH. For example, you say, I think in Castilian Spanish, when we have an E or an I, we pronounce the C with the same sound. For example, here, Ciudad Real, Ciudad, okay? For you to remember. Maybe you have heard in um, Spanish being spoken in Latin America, Ciudad, we say Ciudad. For example, here, Valencia, Valencia, okay? With that sound, Barcelona. But remember, only with an E and an I. You don't do the same, for example, here. You don't say Cuenca, we say Cuenca, okay? Cuenca, Valencia. And then when you have the Z, you always pronounce it like that, okay? With all the vowels. Zamora, you have Zaragoza. You have Jerez, Jerez, okay? And so on. So very important. Uh, that would be one of the main differences today. Also, we don't speak like that all over the peninsula. In the south, we're going to see that it is the same, and that's probably why in um, Central and South America um, we find that same accent. I wanted you to see this map too, because remember, we have in Spain 1717 states or comunidades autonomas autonomous communities and within each uh, state or comunidad we have provinces look at this one for example andalucia we have one two three four five six seven eight provinces and i want you to remember especially this one called called jaen with the j jaen okay we're going to be talking about this a little bit later and uh, on Friday, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Madrid. But very important, we have 50 provinces, okay? Take notes because this might appear later in a little quiz, okay? So 50 provinces, a few provinces inside each state or comunidad autónoma, okay? For example, Madrid is only one. Again, you have eight here. You have uh, two or three. It depends on the state, okay? Oops. Uh, we have our first video today. Uh, this is a very cool video, only 26 seconds. And this describes how language was changing in the Iberian Peninsula uh, from the year 1000 to the year 2000. So uh, as battles were being won, different wars happening in the peninsula, you see how people were saying, well, now you speak my language. So here you have in red the Basque, Catalan, right? Uh, Castellano, remember, sometimes we say Spanish, sometimes we say Castellano. We have uh, both tendencies, people saying that it should be called this way or the other. Leonese, uh, remember um, Portuguese Galician was kind of the same um, a few centuries ago. And here is Arabic and Mozarabic, okay? Very important. So take a look at how it changes from the year 1000 to the year 2000. Pay uh, uh, attention. It's only 26 seconds. Ooh, it didn't play. Let me see one more time. There we go. You see how it's changing, Castilian Spanish is getting more and more territory in the peninsula, 1700s, growing and growing. It's pretty amazing, pretty amazing how it changed. Um, again, remember these uh, lectures are gonna be on the internet forever, like Dave said, and you can look at it uh, later too, but I find it quite amazing to explain also our current situation. You see dialects in Spain um, and other official languages be besides Spanish all over the peninsula. You see Castellano, Catalan, Aragonese, Vascuense or Basque, 
Uh, there is another language up here in Asturias uh, and Galician here to the west. And then we have the different accents. And uh, here, I want you to look at this. Um, this is very important because of the influence it has had in other countries. This that we call the ceseo is when we pronounce every word with a C or a Z in the same way we do with the S. So for example, um, in this area that has vertical lines, they wouldn't say um, Barcelona. They would say Barcelona, like maybe you have learned before. And then in horizontal is the opposite. Even the S is pronounced with that TH sound. So people don't say, um, ven a mi casa, come to my house. They say, ven a mi casa. More or less this area, but we're gonna, be, we're gonna get closer with the next um, maps. Look at this one. Again, the divisions by states or comunidades. And then in Andalusia, here in the South, you see the parts where people pronounce uh, words only with the S sound, even if it has a C and a Z, right? And in green with the opposite, it has like the TH sound, even when they're reading or pronouncing the S, okay? I think that's clear. We can go a little bit faster now. Uh, once again, the map, I like this one because it's very, very specific and, uh, you know, it's a good, uh, good picture. Predominio del ceseo or ceseo. And then look at this. Look at all the countries that now speak Spanish in the world. How many? How many do you see? You can answer with the chat. Are you counting? Nobody's using Google, right? I hope you're not using Google when we do the Kahoot quiz. So look, España and then Guinea Equatorial. Did you know this? Even in Africa, Spanish speaking country. And we have other 19 all over, okay? So 21 in total, 21 including Spain. Um, I'm also going to show you the next one because it's a better picture, but also because you have it in English. Um, actually, there are only three uh, country names that are spelled differently or yeah, written differently, uh, sorry. Uh, Dominican Republic, we say República Dominicana. Um, Spain, España, we say. And I'm not sure how you pronounce this in English. Equatorial Guinea, maybe? We say Guinea Equatorial. The other ones are um, written in the same way. Of course, our pronunciation in Spanish and yours in English is different. And that brings us to the meals in Spain. Okay, we can take time to speak about the other countries too. We're going, to, we're going to be talking about the meals in Spain. We saw this last uh, week and I wanted to show it to you in a clearer way today because I know some of you wanted to know. So remember, we have breakfast uh, between seven and nine. We have a little almuerzo at noon. Some people have the chance to have it. I used to, when I was uh, working in an office, we used to take a break and have one of our most popular breakfasts that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, comida, usually at 3 p.m. Merienda, remember the churros and the bocadillo with chocolate uh, at 6 and then dinner at 9. So now it's our dinner time. One of our flatmates is having dinner, I can hear him. And for you would be the official Spanish time to have uh, lunch, 3 p.m. That's our official time. Okay. And then our time timetable or schedule, you see here, same. I'm not sure what this means. Maybe they think we take a little nap here because I was looking for uh, the meaning of these lines and I couldn't find it. But yeah, how we work, time to eat, work, dinner, and TV and internet. This was funny too, because maybe we don't do anything else. <laughs> and you can compare it with other European countries. You see it's different, Spain is quite unique, especially when we take the siesta around this time in the summer, in the south, it is quite typical. Okay, and who are these two people? Well, 
David, not David, but uh, David, we say in Spanish, he's one of my best friends from here from Madrid. He actually grew up in my neighborhood that you're going to see in the next video, Embajadores, where I live. You're going to go in a little walk with me. And this is his uh, wife from Mexico they met here in Madrid. But um, I wanted to show you David because he introduced me to and still does, you know, languages are changing all the time. And he's always teaching me the new words, the new slang in the street. He, he sells electronics and he deals with a lot of clients. He's in the street all the time. So he's always updating me, right? Uh, a lot of fun. And he also loves our most popular uh, breakfast that is coming in a few seconds, okay? Uh, also, I put this picture because we need to learn from books too, like our typical ways to salute or to greet here to the left but i think we also need to be in the street david by the way says that he's a an american spirit inside um a spanish body because he travels to new york every time he can he loves the states and this time he took uh, his uh, wife and you can see they're there in little italy but as you know we say buenos dias um Como estás? And then we answer bien y tú. Como siempre, right? Main thing I want to um, highlight about this are, well, there are actually two things. First, we say buenos dias until lunch. So even at 3 or 4 p.m., if someone hasn't had lunch or the comida, the official main course, uh, they will tell you, buenos dias you know usually very upset uh, because they haven't had lunch yet they're they're working and they're they haven't been able to do so um and then after lunch people say buenas tardes maybe until 9 p.m um we usually say buenas noches after dinner and when we're leaving like you say good evening and good night okay also the other thing is that we use in spain the conjugation with vosotros vosotros okay and that is um, uh, plural, informal, and that would be like, for example, well, in English it's quite easy because you say you for singular, plural, formal, inf and informal. Remember in Spanish we have four different ones for the singulars and plurals. And then vosotros is the one we use a lot, especially in an informal way of the plural. So, for example, here, David and Liz Day, I would say, Vosotros sois guapos. You are beautiful. Vosotros sois guapos. But you find this conjugation only here in Spain, okay? Not in other countries. In some Central American countries, South American countries, you find the vos, which is a bit different. And it used to be uh, typical here in Spain. Okay, I need to go a little bit faster. Okay, our most popular um, breakfast, and I think you want to take notes again, is called Pan tumaca. The origin comes from uh, Catalonia. This is Catalonian, by the way. Pa amb tomaquet, or bread with tomatoes. Okay, you can order in a tosta, a little toast like this, or a barrita, which is small baguette bread. You can have half of it or the whole thing. So you have media barrita, half, or a barrita. And then you put this shredded tomato. Um, a bit of salt, a bit of olive oil. And oh, so some people, before doing everything, they um, spread the garlic like against the, the bread, then they put the tomato, then salt, olive oil, and we love it like that. Okay, always virgen extra. We're not gonna, not gonna get into that conversation today, but virgen extra. And some people put the ham on top. You have serrano. Iberico, and then Iberico de Bellota, which is the best one. Jamón Iberico, Iberian ham, de Bellota. And what is, what is Bellota? Acorn. Here you have it. Acorn is Bellota. So the best uh, quality comes from the pork or the pig who are in the, you know, in nature, uh, not controlled not in a cage, and they're eating acorn all the time. This is the, the tree, and thina, you say home oak tree. Then you see 
pigs, right? These are not bulls, these are pigs, about 200 kilograms. And you see the home oak trees, okay? Another famous, um, um, well, not only breakfast, but we have it along the day, at least I do, is the pincho de tortilla. And again, pincho is usually a small portion of food over a piece of bread. In this case, it's different. You see kind of the slice separately, but they give it to you with bread. It comes from a bigger pie, right? You know, the Spanish omelet, tortilla de patatas, or tortilla originally comes from the Basque country. You see the TX, pincho. In Spanish, we write it pincho like that, CH. And this is one of my favorite um, bars in the Basque country, in San Sebastian, San Sebastian. They put all the pinchos around the bars and you take as many as you want and keep this little toothpick uh, on your dish, on your plate. They, they trust you, they believe in you, and then you pay as many as you have had, okay? So they, they trust you in that sense. And here's our second video. I, I went for a walk for you guys, so we can walk together in my neighborhood. It lasts, uh, it lasts like three minutes. And I'm going to take you to one of the typical restaurants of this neighborhood. There we go. Luis, is there audio with this video? Yes, I you cannot hear. If you, I think you'll have to unshare your screen. And then when you do the share, you have to click a button that says share audio. Let me see if that's around here. When you do your share, right at the bottom, it says share computer sound and optimize screen share for video clip. Yeah. Click those two buttons and then do it and then reshare. And that will be much better. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's, let's start again. Okay, so I just left my building. Thank you. A few seconds ago, I want to show you a bit of Madrid today. Uh, it is May 3rd, it's Sunday and we're finally allowed to leave our houses for a little bit in the... early morning or in the late afternoon, evening, a few hours to exercise, to walk. Well, this is my neighborhood in the southwest of uh, Madrid. I wanted to show you how we recycle and well this orange one is kind of mixed now that we have the green light let's uh, cross because this traffic light doesn't really last for long I guess the cyclist is not really paying attention well beautiful uh, street very common very uh, typical from uh, Madrid and from Spain and you see our uh, gas station the main oil company in Spain Repsol and yes, I want to take you through this sidewalk because we're going to be talking about food and the menus of the day and menu del dia in Spain. Wow, a lot of people here to go into the shop. But yes, I want to show you this next uh, sidewalk before we continue with uh, more slides and show you a particular place that I like to come to to have a lunch sometimes and well they have different options and it's quite an authentic bar authentic small restaurant family restaurant not uh, expensive it's not the nicest food either but 
um, there's always a lot of people in it, local people, and that's always a good sign, right? Here to the left, uh, you see how they have the tables and chairs, and people will come and have a uh, lunch outside in La Terraza, the terrace. And this is the restaurant or the cafeteria to the right. Well, that's it for now. I'll show you more things on okay. this lot. Can you still uh, hear me well? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, how do I pass this one now? Uh, wait a second. This got kind of stuck here. Yeah, I think if you just select the next slide and then reshare again, it'll be okay. Yes, I used to have the the menu here. Mm. Oh, there we go. Down to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I, I used the I used the the arrows. Aha. Okay, this is the typical sign we would find in that restaurant that I showed you at the end. Menu del dia, the menu of the day. You usually have about five options for the first course, main course, and um, dessert with a primer plato, segundo plato, bebida, postre, pan, bread, only 11 euros. Yes, and if you sit in the terrace that I showed you, one euro more. I know it's a lot of food. It is something typical for our um, uh, comida. But if you're not that hungry, these are the other options you usually have. Platos combinados, combined uh, foods in just one dish, a little bit um, less expensive too. Tapas, remember, a small portion. People say that the origin of tapas is the following. Since we have had many wars and battles, we have had starving times in Spain. People say that when they used to go to bars and restaurants to ask for a drink, uh, the owner of the bar, would cover their drink with a little dish and they would put on that little dish a bit of food for free to help people um, you know, eat something for, for the day, also to avoid insects and so on. But this is uh, the main version of the origin of tapas and still today we can get them for free, I mean included with your drink or you can order them from the menu depending if you're in the south or in the north. In the south they tend to be more generous. Raciones is for two or more people. Ración, bocadillos. Remember, we talked about this, the baguette sandwich. Uh, ensaladas, you know, salads, desserts, postres, and bebidas, okay? So let's see. Let's say we just wanted to get a, a drink to see if we get a free tapa in this bar. I would get a mosto, which is the grape juice. Maybe you decide to get what we have instead of Gatorade or Powerade here, an Aquarius, okay, or an ST. And they would probably give us this, some olives. We say aceitunas, our big name from the south, and olivas, we say in the north, okay? Always Madrid as a reference. We have in the province that I told you before in Andalusia, in Jaén, only 66 million trees, many varieties of olives all over the country. All over Spain, we have 300 million trees. This is important to take in your notes too, okay? And experts say that we uh, are in control of 50% uh, of the world's production, talking about olive oil, okay? So yes, you will usually get something like that, maybe nuts, or maybe patatas bravas, a little bit of a spicy sauce, not very spicy. I remember last time we were, we were talking about Mexican and Spanish food. Here we don't need very spicy. And if you have the menu, this would be one of your first options you had there written down. Patatas revolcona. These are like mashed potatoes. This is uh, pork skin uh, fried, right? Garlic and these patatas revolconas are amazing, okay? Then one of the other options you had for your main course was pincho moruno. This is a different kind of pincho, right? These are like skewers with uh, pork meat. And then for dessert, let's say you order arroz con leche. Give me about my favorite dessert. Here you 
go is very typical here in Spain. If not, if you want something as modern, uh, you can order the typical bocadillo of Madrid. Again, take notes, uh, calamari, calamares, bocadillo de calamares. They say Madrid is the biggest port in the peninsula, even though we don't have a port or a coast, but apparently the best product comes to the capital because also people pay more. So it's a typical bocadillo. Another very typical dish of Madrid, if you wanted to share with another person, this ración would be huevos estrellados or huevos rotos, French fries and then fried eggs. We cut them, sometimes we add some ham, and we love to have them like this. Even the former king loves to have them uh, very often. And another option would be from the menu to order the typical, typical, typical uh, meal of Madrid for lunch, which is the cocido madrileño, especially in the winter, because you have the hot soup with noodles, and then you have the vegetables, you have all the different kinds of meats, you have chorizo, the sausage, morcilla, the black pudding, and yeah, some greasy uh, stuff, but it is necessary, especially for the winter, okay? And then of course, you have more tapas and raciones. Remember, we were former uh, different kingdoms. We were different kingdoms and each region has something typical. Remember the tapas, the small ones, raciones, the bigger ones. You see part of the Iberian ham, you see some of the um, Spanish um, tortillas, some anchovies from the north, uh, mussels, um, shrimp. We usually have uh, more uh, for Christmas. And then you also have uh, um, here, for example, the same patatas with alioli sauce, which is made out of mayonnaise and garlic. Pretty good. We have the octopus here from the northwest. Uh, pulpo a la gallega, and many, many, many options. Actually, so many that I wanted to show you a map of the Iberian Peninsula to tell you about our main products. You see the octopus again. Here in Asturias, we have the fabada, is the main dish, fabada. And we make them with those white uh, big beans. Um, and so many different things, as you know, manchego cheese from La Mancha, all these cold cuts from this area of the Southwest are the best. You see our main area to produce olives, our tomatoes, remember the paella from Valencia, and so on. This is the area of wine, of course, that's why you have the grapes. And well, one more uh, mm, uh, map uh, with a typical dish, or at least one dish from each area I wanted to show you and even go and, and check them out. I know we don't have much uh, more time um, and the recipes can be a little bit long. I'm not the greatest cook either, but uh, it would be great for you to be familiar with the typical dishes of Spain by region, okay? Actually, this feels like going for a little um, uh, swim. I'm gonna do so here. And I'll leave you my contact information. I know it's a lot of uh, things to share, but yeah, I don't want to take uh, too much of your time. And I hope you have enjoyed it. And we keep learning uh, with the other lectures this week. That's it for now, Dave. We can go to questions. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just like earlier, I, I am hungry now. <laughs> just want to eat. Um, so, okay, let me see here. Let me get this, get this going. Okay, so questions. Um, please click the raise hand button to ask questions. There have to be some. Yes, and I was running a little bit at the end because I didn't want to take mm -hmm. so much more time, but um, I think we got some new, information today. All right, we have a, a question from uh, Lupo. Lupo, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Hello, can you Lupo. Hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Oh, cool. Hi, Luis. Hi. 
<laughs> I'm listening here from France, actually. Awesome. My accent is Italian. Oh, okay. Good cocktail. <laughs> good. Good, good, Speaking good. Food. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I was wondering, do you have any pizzeria in Madrid or in Spain? We do. We have uh, many. And uh, now the trend is with hamburgers. Actually, I have a couple of friends who have started their um, businesses with hamburgers. They're being very, very successful. But we do have um, some good uh, pizzas too, especially in the center, not far from here. Uh, we have a few uh, pizzerias. We know, you know, uh, it's such, a, such an international city that we have uh, foods from all over the world, but, but we do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you judge the taste? Do I judge the taste? Yeah, how do you, how, how, how do you, how do you like it? Well, it is true that uh, I've been to, to your country many times, uh, especially to the Toscana and, you know, from Rome all the way up to Lake Como. And I know more in the north. Um, I know the most popular pizzas are from uh, the south, from Napoli, right? Uh, yeah. I've tried some of your style and, and I think that's my standard, but I guess it depends on the tastes of everyone, right? I just like it thin and a good tomato sauce and... Yeah, a few other things on it. Yeah, you have to, you, you have to be in Rome for that. Okay, to, in Rome. <laughs> you have to tell me where to, to go. Yeah, and to, and, to keep, and, to, and to keep the subject, uh, do they uh, customize pizza with uh, Spanish ingredients? Oh, a really good question. Uh, I have seen, especially in Catalonia, uh, I do tours, yeah, especially in Southern Europe, <laughs> And when I've been to Catalonia, I tend to go with um, seafood. So the most typical ones from that area. Uh, well, anchovies is quite popular in other parts of the world and tuna and so on. But they do use the local product, local seafood. And um, yeah, that's what I have seen. Other ones like more Spanish, mm, I don't recall. No. For those wondering, um, uh, Lupo is a good friend of mine. And he's just opened a, um, a pizza shack in Bone, France. So if you're in Bone, it's to find uh, Pizza Al Taglio. And um, you can... It's going to be my question where, where he lives. I was going to ask you before he, he left us where he lives. So, okay, now I know. Yeah. Look Bone. It up. Yeah. Thanks, Lupo. Thanks, um, Thank you. Take care. Max, welcome back. How are you doing? Good. Hi, so Max. Hi, I was wondering, what are the typical car brands in Spain? Oh, very good question. Um, the most popular one last decades and still today is Seat. S-E-A-T. It has had different owners. I understand at some point it was associated with uh, Volkswagen and, um, and Fiat. But I think um, now Seat is a little bit more independent i'm not so sure about the ownership today to be completely honest but uh, it is our most popular one and my cousin has one of those my dad has one of those so yeah say it thank you great Thanks question max always nice to hear from you max all right any other questions if not we will begin cahooting is everybody okay. in that wants to be in? Should I put on the music now? Can I play? Ah. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got here. Beatbox. All right. All right, reggae. You know me. I love reggae. Um, I finished eighth in Sarah's Kahoot, the last one today. Eighth. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Well, finally, it's a finished one. Let's see if anybody's on here. Um, okay. All right, I think we're ready. If anybody else wants to get in on the Kahoot, get in now. Wait, it's a song. It's a different kind of version. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to do it. Good luck, everybody. Fuck. Let's 
go. Most popular breakfast. Picture there again. Not that that helps too much this time. <laughs> Although it does. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. That's bread, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Oops, sorry, I went too fast there. Okay. Ooh. Provinces. I remember. Remember? Oh, good, good. Ooh. Here's the provinces. All right, here we go. It's a close one. Mm-hmm. We say tapa. My favorite is the it's like a deep fried potato ball. It's like a cheesy potato deep fried ball. What is that? It's delicious. There you go. Most people got that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to number four. Do you have them on a sandwich? I keep seeing them on yes. bread. Is that how they how they do it? Yes. We have yes, ca yes. fried calamari a lot in in the U.S., but never on on bread. It's some always people, like uh, some people add a bit of mayonnaise, but that's it. Mm. Yep. Okay. That's the last one, right? A lot of trees. A lot of trees, yes. That's how each one of them. Agile seal. Did anybody get all five? Yes. Deadly turtle. Nice job. And if uh, uh, it's just if you want to uh, identify yourself in the chat, we'll uh, give you a, a shout out for so your job well done. Um, so, oh, yeah, hopefully yes, they'll say their name. Thanks, Patty. Yes, the, 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 the croquette. So good. I love those. Oh, the croquette. Okay, okay. Yeah, those are yeah usually that with a bechamel sauce, uh, very, very. Um, mm. Uh, soft inside. We have many. The only, the only one I didn't love. I mean, I I'm I like a lot of stuff. The only one I didn't like was the um, squid in its own ink. Uh, I, uh, you know, I want to know. That's not your thing. I like the that? black the black rice that is done with that. Like uh, octopus in its own ink. Have you had that? Yeah. 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 Do you like it? Maybe the texture. I, I prefer the black no, rice was, that has the squid ink. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was just unsettling to me. I, 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 I can't say the taste was bad. I just, the, I, I don't know. The idea of <laughs> eating the ink seemed weird. And I, then again, <laughs> I was much younger. So maybe, maybe if I saw it again, it would be a, uh, a different result. It is true. Our, our uh, taste changes. There's a question there, yeah. uh, there by yeah. Kerry. What's the name of the blood yeah. sausage? Is morcilla. So M O R C I L. L L A, Morafia, Kerry. Okay. All right. Squid ink in pasta. Good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe in pasta would be okay. Mine was like just a big bowl of squid ink. It was weird. Oh, that uh, is not but, but then again, you know what? If it were in front of me right now, I would eat it all. So you know, <laughs> all the rest is great. All right. So um, thank you so much, Luis. We really uh, appreciate you doing this. And thanks everybody for joining again. Um, we are doing this every day, twice a day. And for more information, visit our blog at passports.com slash blog. Uh, and you can see um, all of the things that we have coming up. This was uh, yesterday, uh, last week's blog. Here's this week's blog that has all of the upcoming content and all of the videos you can find on the blog after. So for instance, tomorrow at 11, there will be Parisian street furniture. At one, these are Eastern times, by the way, Ludwig II, uh, and um, that is our day 
tomorrow. So we have Parisian street furniture, Ludwig II. And by the way, the Parisian street furniture one, if you're thinking, oh, you know, what's that? It's very cool. They're like, uh, uh, you know, curious items that you find around um, Paris. Very neat. That so, sounds like a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, very cool one. So anyway, thank you all for coming. Check us out, uh, share on social media. Um, thank you again, Luis. Okay, thank you all. We'll keep in touch. Take care, everybody. Right. Take Have care. a great day.